So last month, the European Space Agency's Rosetta mission landed uh, this lander named Philae on a comet. Uh, when it landed, something unexpected happened. It didn't land where they thought it was going to. It bounced off. Uh, so this video is to show you what we think probably happened, what may have happened to that comet. Uh, first, uh, this first part is the landing as planned, and this went smooth as silk. This data is uh, from the SPICE data that the European Space Agency released, so it shows exactly where the comet is, exactly where Rosetta is, which is the main vehicle, and it flew toward the comet. It released the little lander, Philae, and then Rosetta made an abrupt uh, maneuver to the uh, right to so they could go back to orbiting the comet instead of crashing into it like like Philae is. So there Philae hits the comet but here's where something happened and that no one knows exactly what happened but right now we know it hit there it bounced off and it took a kind of a short hop about 46 minutes long. Well uh, the European St Space Agency took a few pictures of the lander just after it landed which gives you a good fix on which direction it was going about how fast so with the best guess of what happened at that point is it went over took a little hop it hit again somewhere near the rim of that crater and then it must have bounced off in a little bit different direction maybe had a little bit higher trajectory and uh, it went bouncing off towards the other side of the crater and now first off I have to say that this second hop is uh, much more speculative than the first one. The first one we have a good idea where it landed. There are these photos right after the landing. It gives you a good idea of the direction and how fast it was going. The second one uh, is just based on the question of ESA thinks the lander ended up on the opposite side of this crater somewhere near the rim or on the rim. How could it possibly have gotten there? And this is about the only explanation that makes any sense. Is this second hop uh, that changes direction and goes across the crater. So now we're going to look uh, at the whole sequence again, this time from Philae's point of view. So right now Philae is hooked up uh, to Rosetta, and Rosetta is orbiting the comet nicely, and you can see it changes direction and aims straight for the comet. Then it gets in position. Um, Philae has to be exactly oriented exactly the way it's going to land, because it doesn't have any like jets or uh, rocket nozzles that can help to orient it. It just is oriented as a gyroscope. Uh, gyroscopic kind of thing that keeps its orientation but the orientation it has right now is the one it's going to have when it lands. This again is from the European Space Agency data that they release publicly so everything from the position of Rosetta to Philae to the comet is, is very well known and well established. This is definitely very close to where it hit in the exact time and so on. And now here's where we again enter the land of, of a little bit of speculation. I modeled this with the orbiter to the spaceflight simulator. But if these parameters work out, the flight time and the distance covered and so on, this first bounce must have been very low and close to the surface. So it's traveling relatively fast and relatively close to the surface. It's not like a big high bounce, it's, it's a low scrape. And then somewhere uh, along the uh, rim of the crater it must have run into something and and that just gave it a little bit of a uh, redirection it wasn't like a real hard hit apparently but um, it might have bounced it just a little bit higher and a little bit off to the left if it's going to land on the opposite side of the rim it's got to go up higher the second time that the first hop was uh, quite a long ways in quite a short time and the second one is less distance in a longer time so it must have gone up higher and um, a little bit to the left of if this theory is true and then I haven't shown you there there's a final bounce it's just a few minutes and it must have gone just a few meters but basically we've, we've landed on a comet four times um, and th the reason if you don't know is is this comet they, they say it's about the size of Mount Everest but um, you know Mount Everest doesn't have that much gravity compared to like whole earth or even the moon or mars or whatever so so it's a very 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 slight gravity and it would have been very easy to bounce off it and just keep going and not come back down at all so uh, anyway 
th this is uh, one last look of the ESA's data. Um, th so that's the part we definitely know how it went. It went down, it landed on the head of that comet, it, it bounced off and it bounced around a few times and came to rest somewhere. So I just have to say, uh, personally I think that this is really cool and it's uh, fun that, that they release enough of the data information that you can actually get in there and play around with it and uh, it's just a lot of fun but even just like lo looking at this great model of the comet that they've released and the images um, you know until we sent missions to comets we didn't have much of an idea of what they look like and to have it in this kind of detail is really amazing. You'll notice in this model the top part as we're looking at it here is much smoother than the bottom. Um, that's not because it's actually smooth it's just because they don't have good data on that part. It's winter up there and it doesn't get much sunlight and uh, so they haven't been able to get much images but as, as the seasons of the comet progress um, there'll eventually be more sunlight down there and they'll be able to get a lot a better look at it and then our model won't look just kind of smooth and featureless up there because believe me from the glimpses we've gotten of that part it, it's not featureless it's just as rough as the rest so we did it we landed on a comet i don't know about the rest of you but i've been dreaming about the day we might land on a comet since i was maybe four years old so it's really great to have all these images all this data and be able to kind of experience that comet landing right here on your own computer.